Hi everybody, my name's Heidi and I am a tutor for Riverside Crafts and Beads. Um, today we're going to be doing a video on paint pouring. Um, it's become very popular just recently and everybody wants to know how to do it and we've been teaching it at Riverside Crafts and I'm going to take you through the steps today for four different techniques. We'll get started. So, to start paint pouring, first of all, cover all your area with plastic sheeting and have some plastic gloves, vinyl gloves. Obviously, I don't use latex, but plastic gloves. Um, you need to have some spatulas of some sort, so either tongue depressors or lollipop sticks. If you have a palette knife, that'll be handy. And also have a couple of paint brushes to hand. Um, I use cocktail sticks sometimes to poke holes in my paint pot, my paint squirters if they get clogged. And you also need a tray of some sort for each piece that you do. Um, I use these 12 by 12 scrapbook storage trays. They're perfect because they resist the paint when it's dry. So it creates a skin. So everything that's poured off around your, your paint pour um, creates a skin when it's dry and you can reuse that, which I'll show you right at the very end. Um, the other thing I use is milk bottle tops. And these I use to rest my pieces that I'm going to pour onto. So my canvases or my MDF. It just raises them up off the bottom of the, the tray and stops things sticking together. Um, and also it lets the air circulate around it so that everything can get dried. It does take quite some time for it to dry out. So I generally find, you know, within a week they're completely dry, but you do need to have somewhere to put them to dry off where there's no dust or anything. You can put like those food umbrellas over them if you want to, to stop dust collecting on them if you have to put them in an area where there's heavy uh, footfall. Um, the other thing you need are cups, either um, paper or plastic cups. Oops. And you also need, if you're going to do um, a cell pour, so that is where you add silicone to your piece and have the cells react which is the first one we're going to do um, and also the other ones to stop air bubbles etc um, you're going to need a mini blowtorch so i've got two different sorts here um, one i bought from a, a general purpose store and, and the other was i got online for my students okay uh, the other thing that might come in handy um, i do have a strainer so a sink strainer that's for one of our pores and also some ball chains so much like we have on our plugs that are on our sinks in the house um, you can also buy this at Riverside Crafts and Beads we do do this on the roll um, so that's going to be our chain pull the other thing that I found is particularly popular with my students is to add glitters and mica powders once you've poured your piece so it just gives that final finish to it so if you have some glitters very fine glitters work best not not chunky ones um, and you would do this after you've used your blowtorch because some of them can be flammable so that would be the very last thing that you would sprinkle on top of your your piece the other thing I find useful is a paper plate of some description it doesn't have to be square that's to put my brushes and things on once they're wet and also when we do the chain pour we need a surface to pour some paint onto to put our chain in okay so the last thing I'm going to show you is the silicone so I have mine again in a condiment bottle um, you can buy it online we do have some stocks down at the shop um, it's not online and I don't think it's going to be able to be posted out, but uh, feel free to pop into the shop and see Donna. I think that's all of it. So my acrylic paints, I have mixed up most of my colours except one because it takes 
some time to mix these colours together and get the right consistency, um, I didn't think it was appropriate to spend time just mixing paints with you guys. So I'm going to show you with my white, which is what we're going to use first. Um, and I'll show you the consistency we need to get by adding the pouring fluid and the water. Um, you only add the silicone at the very end when you've got your paint colours separated and only if you want to do an open cell. And I will show you that technique. This is the first one we're going to do. So as I said, you can pour onto canvas and MDF. So the first piece I'm going to do is going to be onto a deep canvas. So I'm going to bring that in. And with all our paint pours, we don't just go straight onto canvas. We actually put a coating of paint on first. So one with pouring fluid in it and also water. So it's watered down. I'm just gonna pop some gloves on. So with every pour we do, we always put this base coat on. And it can be any colour you want. Most people tend to use white or a black. But as I say, it can be any colour you want. That will be your background colour. So if you have open spaces on your piece, that will be the colour that shows through. Okay, so I'm going to take, I'm just going to move this out of the way just a second so you can see what I'm doing here. So up here is my white paint. I haven't done anything with it, it is just white paint. So I'm going to tip some into my, and it's very, very thick and gloopy. I'm going to tip some into my, please come out paint. Okay, so we're going to need this for every piece we do. I'm going to be using white as my background, so I'm going to put a fair amount in here. You'll see when I pour out for the other colours how much I'm going to use. So hopefully this is going to be enough for my four pours. Okay, so you can see in there that I've got more white paint. It's difficult to see. It's about a third of a cup. I'm going to get a lolly stick and you can see it's it's really 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 thick Ooh. okay so I'm going to add some of my pouring fluid and mine is in you can take it straight from the container but mine is in um, a condiment oops squirter I'm just going to put in about half of what we've got of paint so about half of the quantity of paint we put in and I'm just going to mix it around and see what we're like now we're still very very thick so can you see there we're really thick it's, it's barely dripping off our thing I'm going to put a bit more in so you can put equal quantities of paint and pouring medium. With water, you only want to put a third at the most of what you've got paint quantity. So not so much water. So that was the water I was adding there. I'm going to stir it again. Make sure you stir it thoroughly, otherwise you might have thick bits at the bottom and thinner bits at the top. So I'm going to drip it again. Oh, it's very, very thick, this white. Some paints are thinner than others. Um, different colours can be thinner. So don't go rushing in and putting a lot of product in before you've sort of tested how thick the paint is because each one is different and every brand is different. I use the, the ones that we have down at the shop which is in Market Deeping, it's on the high street. Um, and they've got fantastic, obviously, a fantastic array of colours. Um, obviously, I've pre-planned my colours for today, but you can use any colours you want, and you can use metallics as well. So you're not limited in the colours that you use. 
Okay, so let's see how we are now. Can you see that this is running? Okay, so this is how I want it. This is like double cream. So I'm going to bring, let's move those out of the way. I'm going to bring my piece back into the frame for you. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm just going to pour some on. And I've got a little palette knife here and I'm just going to smooth it across. Oops, a daisy. So you want it to look like it's been iced on top. So we do want to get it nice and smooth. On. So you don't want to use a brush for this because when you use a brush, you're not putting on enough paint for this to work. So don't worry about your edges. When you um, have finished your pour, you can, as it's, because it will drip down the sides, um, as it drips down the sides, you can actually sort of drag it with your fingers. You can use your fingertips to just drag it to the edges and make sure your edges are covered. Or uh, you can wait, so I'm gonna add a little bit more in this corner. You can wait until the whole thing's dried and then you can paint metallic around the edge of your frames. You can use building flakes, you can use um, metallic foils. So you can finish off the edges in a different way. Or you can just paint them. So that's entirely up to you. So you can see it's got a nice thick coating. And you don't want it all running off the sides before we start. Okay. Have we got everywhere covered? Let's just get a little bit more there. So it doesn't need to be completely flat because as I said, this is just the background that you're going to have. So I'm going to move that out of the way. So this first one that we're going to do is a dirty pour and we're going to do with silicone so that we get the cells reacting, okay? So we've got three colours plus our white. So I am going to use white in the pour as well so that it brings the white to the front of our piece. The other colours that I've got, I've got teal, which I've already pre-mixed, but it might have thickened up a bit, so I might have to put some extra in. I'm going to put these all in separate cups so that I can oops, so that I can add silicone to them. So I've put let me move that forward a bit so you can see I've got my teal in there. Now it is although it seems a bit daft to add black, it's not going to completely overtake your your piece. So it does tend to sort of give it a bit of def definition. So that one's my black. Not as much black I've put in there, so. And my other one is my Cerise. So I really love the Cerise. And then we're gonna use a bit of our white as well. So I'm just gonna put some white in the pot. I'm doing it separately, as I said, because I'm going to pop in some silicone and I don't want the silicone in my, my bulk of my white paint. Okay, so I've got my four colours and then I'm going to take my silicone. You can see my cups there. And I'm just going to put a few drips. You might see it make a difference in the, in the paint before we even start doing anything. Then you're going to need to stir it in. So stir each one separately. Okay, and last of all my white. Okay, so I'm going to move these just to my side and I'm going to move my canvas out of the way so I can show you how we layer them up in the cup. So we take a fresh cup Okay, and we start layering up the paint in the cup. So I think 
I don't want black to last. So remember that the first paint that you put in your cup is going to be the last one on top of it. So what I really want is a bit of white on top. So I'm going to put, let's put my white in first. So I'm going to lay some white in there. And I'm going to take a bit of black. If you can see in there. Oh, just. And then I'm going to put a bit of teal. And then a bit of purple. Another bit of white. A little bit more. That teal seemed a little bit thick. Just add a little bit more water to it. That's better. Just pour a little bit more in. Black. And don't worry if you do make too much paint. Just leave it till the end. And then if you have a spare tray, you can literally dot your paints in your tray. Right, I'm just going to put one last bit of white in. And I think we may be there. Okay. So, now comes the tricky bit. We're going to do a flip pour. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to lift up my canvas and I'm going to flip my cup onto my canvas and then set it down and leave it for a second okay so I'm going to take my cup there we go and flip it down okay so I can see it's I can see through the cup that the colors are oops a daisy so you can splodge it the cups Oops, not empty. You can splodge it around a bit. Okay. Let's get the excess out of the cup. Don't waste it, all those beautiful colours. So, we're now going to tilt. So we tilt it to various sides and you can see those cells opening up already, there we go, so we just want it to get to kind of the edges, we don't want it to run too much over the edge if we can possibly help it, and we're going to tilt it up towards me, when I tilt it back again you'll see as I'm doing this the cells are opening up on it and then as we when we torch it as well, it's going to open up even more. Okay, so I might need to add a little bit more. So let's, if you feel it needs a bit more, go back to your dirty cup and add some more painting. I've got some lovely cells on that, it's beautiful. Let's just add a blob of that white. Okay, so I've got a few more bits in my cup. I'm just going to do another one here. Now you don't have to take it right to the very edges, it's good to have some, some empty space and some white, it's entirely up to you. So if you want it to go right over to the edges then just keep tilting. You can change direction, you can kind of manipulate it to, to, to move to where you want it. So if there's a particularly good bit that's coming out then just tilt it to where you think 
it would be better to go. And I think I'm going to leave it alone. Okay, so you can see these beautiful cells that have opened up. Now what we're going to do, I'm just going to change my gloves because I've got a bit sticky. Sticking to each other, you'll have quite a few glove changes. If you don't want to be sticking to each hand. So this is my blowtorch. What you don't want to do is keep your blowtorch on the same bit for too long and, and don't have it too close. But if you've got any air bubbles, it will remove the air bubbles. You can see, maybe see some of them popping. And it also helps open up those cells as well. So you can see that my cells are nice and open and I'm catching all those little air bubbles. Um, if you can see where I've just been, there's little blue. Basically, it moves it around a bit, so sometimes you'll get a different colour come through underneath when you put the heat over it. Okay, so I can't see any more heat bubbles. I'll just wait for my torch to go out before I put it down. So, I would leave this like this, but if you wanted to, I have got some nice, very fine, sweet poppy glitter and use the end of one of your, oops, one of your uh, lolly sticks and just pick up a tiny bit and just give it a sprinkle and it just gives it that little sparkle. I love this colour, I'm not quite sure what this one is. Oh, that's beautiful. I love those colours. Here we go. Okay, let me tell you what colour that one is. That one is Crystalline Rainbow. That's beautiful. Okay, so that one's nicely finished and I'm going to set that one to one side to dry. Now, if you wanted to, you can pick up out of your pot some of the, some of the colour on your gloves and put it round the edge of your frame, of your canvas. I'm going to leave mine because I want to paint my metallic round the edges. Or I may take the teal colour or the cerise colour and paint it that colour round the edge after everything's dried. Now this one didn't drip that much onto the, the um, tray. Um, however, some of the other ones will do. So. It depends, it does depend on the paints that you're using, um, whether they're going to spread like crazy. And this is quite a big canvas that I've done. Um, normally I would do slightly smaller ones within my classes. So maybe better to start off with, with one of these smaller ones and you'll get a lot more drips. But we will be doing some more, so don't worry. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and clear up my mess and then we'll do the next one, which is a strainer pour. Okay, through our little sink strainer. Okay, so we're back again, guys, and we're going to do a sink strainer pour. So this is just a cheap sink strainer that you put over your plug hole to catch all the rubbish and we're going to do a pour through it. So I'm just gonna put that to one side. And of course, we're going to cover our, our canvas with our white paint that has our pouring fluid in it. And, oops, and water, no silica. Now, one of the reasons we use pouring fluid is because any other medium, when you add it to the paints, can take away the vibrancy of the colours. So, pouring fluid keeps that vibrancy of the colours. You don't make them any paler or, although it's a white fluid, it doesn't make red pink, it doesn't make purple violet, it just keeps that nice colour that you start with. So, okay, let's put that down there. 
So I need to get a cup so I can layer up. Okay, so I have got some red. Oh, need a bit of white as well. Let's put my cup there so you can see. Let's put some green in. Oh, I like that green. Don't stir it in. Okay. And last of all, let's put some white in again. Right, let's see how we do with this one. The one thing I do like with paint pouring is it is completely out of your control. Sometimes things work fantastically and sometimes they don't. So, as we tip this, we're going to swirl it around. So, I'm not going to just dump it straight in. I'm going to swirl it somewhat. Okay. You can see what's happening. And you can see coming out from the sides of it. It's almost like, I always think they look a bit like um, peacock feathers coming out. So let it do its thing for a few minutes. It's... Patience is a virtue. It's moving very slowly, so I'm going to just lift it. We have this beautiful flower. Now you can stretch it just a little bit. I'm not sure that it it will stretch right the way down to the bottom. We don't want to distort it too much. It is rather pretty. I'm going to tip it a bit to my side. Now it's entirely up to you. You can take this right to the very edge or you can, as I've done, leave it there. Don't worry if you get bits of paint on the side here like I have. You can always touch that up with a bit of white. Now then, let's see what I've got. Let's, first of all, let's get the bubbles out. Okay. Now, if you don't move this about too much, it's going to stay more or less where it is. So you can, you can quite happily leave it like that. Here, where I've got some red paint on it and I've got a little splodge of yellow paint there, don't worry too much. You can take it off a little bit with your with your scraper or your lolly stick. Just scrape it off. If you can do it without taking the rest of the colour with you. And then you can always oops, put some white paint there. You can always touch it up. Okay, let's have a little bit of blue. And some lovely blue. This colour's gorgeous. Let's use this little one. I might keep it in the middle there so it's like a flower. And don't worry about that glitter there. Again, cover it over with your white paint. Okay, and put your paints to one side again. Don't waste them. We'll use them at the very end. In fact, we might use some on the next pour. So you can always double up. Okay, so I'm going to switch you off again and I'm going to set up for the next pour, which is a chain pull. Okay. Hi, I'm back everyone. So we're going to do a chain pull for this piece. So let's coat our canvas again. 
I do like these small canvases because they're nice and easy to pick up and I find them easier to get an even layer of paint on. And this particular size and this thickness works really well for the chain pull. And it is what it says on the bottle. We are pulling chain. Okay. So, with this technique, what we're going to do is we're going to blob a line of colours for our chain to sit in. see how long our chain is. So we've got our ball chain here. So we want to, not all of it, but about three quarters of it. Another green. As this chain pull works, it does tend to look like flowers. So it's kind of good to put some green at one end of it okay so then we're going to drop our chain into the paint and then grab a, a lolly stick and just blob get a wipe Use a baby wipe or an antibacterial wipe, whichever you want. Just blob the paint over the top of the chain so that it covers it. It's very difficult to see because it's so thin the chain, but believe me, it's under that. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna have to do this bringing it towards me because I need to pull the chain level. Okay, so you'll have to kind of see what you think in reverse. So we're going to start by dropping our chain in a circle on our paint, okay, and then holding it level with, its, with the board, you want to pull it slowly down. Okay, and then I'm just going to give it a wipe with the cloth. Oops, a daisy. And I'm going to drop it back in and just pop the paint over it again. It doesn't matter if the paint starts to mix a little bit, it'll just make it all that more interesting. For some reason, that's got teal in it. I don't know how that got in there. Okay, I'm going to do it again. Now you can do it the opposite direction. I'm going to do this middle one higher. Okay, and then I'm going to clean my chain off again. And you can keep going at this so you can almost, whoops, create a bunch of flowers. Let's tuck it over again. Okay, let's do it from this direction this time. Oh, this one looked like a feather. Wow. So I might do another little one in here. Let's pop it back in. Let's clean it first, otherwise it gets too gunked up and then it doesn't hold any paint or it ends up looking brown. And you could, if you wanted to, you could do a different colour line each time. So they don't have to be all the same colour, you can change your colours. So let's do another one here. There we go. Okay, let's turn this round so you can see it. There we go. 
So it makes, sometimes it looks like a feather, sometimes it looks like an orchid. But that's how you achieve it. Okay, everyone, I'm back again. So this time I've got an MDF piece and I'm going to cover it in our white that's got our pouring fluid in it and some water to make it that consistency that we so like. Now this particular one is a little bit different. You can use cling film for this um, and plastic bags. I've just got a supermarket freezer bag, I think it is, to use for this one. So just rage your, rage your kitchen. Now any of these pieces, if you want to preserve them for, for longer or you want them to have a nice sort of varnished look to them, you can place these under resin. So you can, once they're completely dry, and make sure they're really, really, really dry, you can pour resin over the top. So if you did a coaster, um, you could pour heat resistant resin over the top of it to preserve it. And of course, what I'm going to show you at the end with the skins, you can use those and again, set them into resin for jewelry pieces or you can cover notebooks. You can die cut skin. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to turn it that way and I'm going to try it. Now, I am not, I might be crafty with some things, but I'm not very good at drawing and creating flowers and things. But this one, you need to create a flower. So I am going to Take it slowly. Okay, so I've got one there, and I think I'll do an orange one down the bottom. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. So you can see mine is far from perfect. But as I say, they don't need to be perfect. So we just want to put some leaves on somewhere. So this is just a standard freezer bag. I'm just going to lay it down. Now you want to pick it up from the corners like so and if you've got a really good print on it you can smush it down at the edges if you wish. Now, if you want to put a bit of a centre in it. Now, what I tend to do after I've done that is get a balloon. Don't blow it right up. You only need it little. Just hope my daughter doesn't see this. She hates balloons. I'm not overly keen on, oh, on them myself. So you can see I've just blown this balloon up. Now I'm going to smush it. Now, a piece of card, it's an um, acrylic painting card. And I'm just going to smush. Pop 
better white in that orange one because it looks a bit stark and needs a bit of contrast in it. That's better. So I'm just going to print this onto this paper and you can use this for background for a card. That's nice. So I'm just going to smush this down. So never waste anything. It's always fireworks. Oops, don't. it slides it just mushes everything there we go so I've not wasted any of my paint but we've got this beautiful floral effect and let's see I think some of this beautiful crystalline rainbow I do like to put a bit of sparkle on them it just lifts them up a little bit and because this is MDF as I said you can Pour resin over the top. Let's take a bit more control over this, just in the centre. So just get a little bit on your tip of your palette knife. Just tap it where you want it to be, and you've got a little bit more control over it, unlike what I did on the last with the blue. So as I say, you can pour resin over the top of this. You can also spray shine over it. Um, the sprays, the craft sprays, sprays that you can get. I think I'd like to put. Now your paper will curl up, um, but once it's completely dry, you can flatten it so you can get it back to its regular shape. And I know I've got oh, some luscious green glitter here. I'm just gonna put a bit on this card one think it's going to be stunning and I'll be able to use that you can die cut it um, you can just use it for background card or your journaling uh, mixed media very good for that and also the skins that I'm about to show you so the thing is with this is you will sit there and you'll think oh I can put a bit of that on there, I can do this, do that. Now if you want to, with your paint pouring, if you're a mixed media fan and or journaling fan, you may want to put some words onto them and you can actually just sit that on it um, and let it dry on it. Um, if anything curls up like the card has done, you can wait till it's completely dry and then just sit something really heavy on it and it will set back down again. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this out of the way. I'm just gonna bring back in the tray that I used, oops, the tray that I used when we did our chain pull. I actually moved the little piece onto another tray because it could fit two on it. So we've already got this paint here now I was saying about skins I have got all my I've got all my cups sitting around here and I'm not going to waste them I'm not going to waste the paint that's in them so I'm just gonna sprinkle my paint over the Now these trays are fantastic because they, you literally can peel the uh, skins off of these when they're dry. Let's pop a bit of, a little bit of white left in there. Don't waste your paints. Make your, make yourself some skins. This is going to be a really bright skin. It's going to be fantastic. I keep splashing myself, so be careful when you're doing this. If you're tipping it out towards yourself, you may well get splashed. You probably do with a face guard for this. 
or safety glasses. <laughs> okay, so I'm not gonna do it all because you'll be here for hours with me finishing off doing this. And again, once you've got all your paint out and moved around on your, your tray, you can add your glitters again. You can add little embellishments. So, you know, if you've got any like little charms and things like that that you want to just push into it, you can do that as well. You may find occasionally the charms come loose when, when it's dry, but it will still have an indentation where it's sat. So all you need to do is just lift it up and just add a little bit of glue. But the stickiness of the paint should hold it in place, but just occasionally it doesn't. And this is so much fun. If you like doing painting when you're a child, you're going to absolutely love this. And you can get as messy as you want. You don't have to get messy. You can... You can, you know, keep it all nice and controlled as long as you have, you know, plenty of wipes and plenty of gloves. Then uh, you can keep it as controlled as you want. I did actually do my first paint pour in my actual craft room where I don't have anywhere near as much space as this. And it was quite controlled and I managed to not get it over too much. Uh, more on myself than than anywhere else so yeah that's I tend to always get if there's anything messy I always get it over myself so I'm just gonna pour a bit of this in okay so I've not used up all my paints but I'm going to show you just move your tray around so your skin spreads out and covers the surface so what you don't want is any spare spaces of the tray so you do want to make sure it's covering the whole surface that's really colorful so i'm not going to spend all that time doing that so i'm just going to move that out the way and then i shall show you some pieces that we have made With the skins so this purple this element here is skin and I've just I took it off and used a PVA glue and stuck it to a tag just one of our tags and added a couple of embellishments and some ribbon and then another piece I took and this one I didn't pour resin onto. I added one of our glass domes over the brass bezel, but I just cut a circle of it and glued it in. And this one, I had a nice big sheet of uh, skin. So I could cut it up into shapes and I cut it to fit this little notepad, glued it on and then added some embellishments on the top of it. So again, you can still put embellishments and glitter into that skin and use that up as well. So I hope you've enjoyed our demonstration of the, the, the techniques for paint pouring. Um, if you really enjoyed it, please subscribe to our Riverside Crafts YouTube uh, channel and our Riverside Beads channel, which is our sister company and we do all things beading and jewellery so i'll probably see you on both channels okay i hope you enjoyed everything and please pay us a visit at riverside crafts and beads in market deeping on the high street bye